The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Smartphones, music, and movies have all been the subject of intellectual property disputes in the past few years. But did you know that one of the most famous intellectual property fights took place over 100 years ago? Today, air travel is something we take for granted, but in the early 1900s, there were intense rivalries between airplane inventors. In this special series we call Moments in History, we travel to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in New York for the reenactment of the 1910 patent legal battle, Wright Brothers versus Glenn Curtis. In 1903, the Wright brothers made aviation history flying their airplane for 59 seconds, a record at the time. Their innovations also made legal history as the Second Circuit heard arguments on whether or not their patent was violated. May it please the court, the apparatus covered by the patent in suit was the first heavier than air dynamic flying machine to fly away like a bird. How do you respond to Mr. Toulmin's argument? After all the evidence is considered, they are merely skillful airplane chauffeurs. The challenge of human flight was an obsession for everyone at the turn of the century. You see all these films of these crazy guys taking these very complicated contraptions off a cliff and just immediately crashing. You had a lot of people who died. Really the key to this was people were crashing because nobody could control the lateral back and forth, what's known as roll. Two men stepped up to the challenge. Wilbur and Orville Wright were ace bicycle mechanics who grew up in an inventive family. Their mother, Susan, um, was the daughter of a carriage maker. And their mother was very much the one that encouraged the free thinking and experimenting, and it was that kind of education that they had at home. The Wrights discovered the secret of flight by observing nature. They saw birds make micro adjustments to their wings in flight to stay aloft, and found a way to do the same by bending the wings. This innovation was a centerpiece of the litigated patent. If a person piloting an airplane cannot control roll, the plane will roll over out of control and come into contact with the earth in a most unfortunate and undesirable manner. The Wrights were the first to achieve controlled flight and had many aviation triumphs, but others were right behind them. Inventor Glenn Curtis built a flyer called the June Bug, which controlled lateral roll with little adjustable wings, or ailerons, on its main wings. The Wrights believed this violated their patent. Curtis believed the solution was his own. Does the June Bug use any type of wing warping, such as that covered by the Wright patent? No, Your Honor. As shown in this June Bug drawing, the wings or aeroplanes are completely fixed and incapable of warping in any way. The Wrights had been granted a pioneering patent, which gave them a wider scope of protection than a regular patent. But for the Second Circuit, the question was, how broad was that scope? It wasn't that they were trying to monopolize or stop anybody else. They were just trying to get paid for their work. They ended up, in some ways, putting hurdles in the development of the airplane industry. The industry didn't develop as smoothly as it could have and should have. We try to find a balance between protecting the rights of, of artists and creators. At the same time, the law recognizes that you want to advance things. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we shall reserve decision. We're adjourned. In 1913, Second Circuit Judges Lancome, Cox, and Ward ruled in favor of the Wright brothers. But only a few years later was the First World War on the horizon. The U.S. government combined royalties for all aviation patents to speed up airplane manufacture. As the Wright brothers continued to build aircraft similar to their original creation, the Flyer, Glenn Curtis experimented with new innovations and it paid off. By 1920, Curtis made over $32 million from the airplanes he created. Today, the names Curtis and Wright have merged into a flourishing corporation. For the U.S. Courts, I'm Bridget Lyles. Thanks for watching.